Hello there, and welcome to my channel, Novice Modelling and the Midlife Crisis. My name is Andy, and this evening I'm going to do you a quick what's in the box kit review of my Italieri Fiat BR20 Siconia, which is part of a Battle of Britain range that Italieri are doing in, which is kind of curious. I mean, I wasn't particularly aware myself that the Italians played much part in the uh, Battle of Britain, but after a little bit of research, apparently they did. So, this um, video is part of a little series I'm doing following a rather large £600 eBay haul that I bought. Uh, this evening I've just done my Junkers JU86 vintage and I'm also doing my Heller Potez 63-11. Uh, these are actually um, viewer requests where people have got in touch and said, oh, can you do us a do as a what, what's in a box review of these particular items. Um, I do kind of enjoy engaging with you guys, so if there's any on that particular haul or any others that you want to have a quick look at, please feel free to drop us a line and I'll put them in, schedule them as soon as possible. So let's get on with the uh, unboxing. Let's get this uh, rather nice cover, cover art out of the way for now. And first off, we're just going to have a quick read of the information provided by Italeri. It's quite quick, so it won't take me too long. The BR-20 Siconia, a low-winged medium bomber, was developed by Italian aircraft manufacturer Fiat during the 1930s. It entered service in 1936 and was characterized by its metal frame and retractable landing gear. Modern and fast for the period, it was developed by the Aviazione Legionaria and had its baptism of fire in 1937 during the Spanish Civil War. In September 1940, the Corpo Aereo Italiano, consisting of the 13th and 43rd Stormo da Bombardamento, were similarly equipped with the BR-20. The Stormy were stationed in Belgium and supported the Luftwaffe during the Battle of Britain. Despite operational comparisons with modern RAF fighters that exposed the BR-20's limits, it was used for the duration of the World War II on various fronts by several Regia, Regia Aeronautica bomber squadrons. So that's a little, that little section out of the way. Let's just have a quick read of the instructions, which are quite nicely uh, laid out. We've got multiple windows here, and they're all really quite simple, not really giving us too many parts to put together at once. As we can see, section one focuses on our three Italian airmen in the cockpit. And we're gonna put the uh, cockpit and the airframe together, followed by section three, where we're gonna start paying attention to the engines and the wings. Section four is let's put the wings and the um, airframe together. We're gonna start putting the smaller items on, including the uh, gun, gun turrets. Section five, we're gonna move on to the tail section. Section six, we're gonna stick the, stick the landing gear on. Now, there's quite a nice um, colour section for the variety of Italian um, uh, colours that we can put this in. Um, these are rather sort of terrifying for a novice like myself because they are rather bitty, these Italian um, colour schemes. Unfortunately, this one, luckily, it's actually plain grey. I do really like these uh, Italian flag markings on this one, but I do kind of prefer the uh, camouflage pattern on either of these two. So we we'll probably might go with this one, which is just sort of a random spray pattern, which even a Muppet like myself should be able to get his head around. So there we go, that's the instruction. So we also have a night bomber here as well. This is for the Belgian, um, the ones that are actually in Belgium. We've got a black plated on the surface. And uh, we've got another one here as well. So there's plenty of options on this, which is really cool. You can do it, set it up in a whole load of series, a whole load of theatres, not necessarily the Battle of Britain. So this particular uh, decal sheet is rather fun. Again, you've got these really, really quite bright Italian markings. You've got standard fascist markings. You've also got a set for the um, Condor Legion when they were stationed in Spain during the Civil War. Got a rather, rather nice witch on a broomstick here. Not too sure what these two M's signify, but there's you know there's really it's quite a really nice really nice decal sheet with this. Uh, incidentally, this was um, 
originally produced around about 1972. That's when this um, moulding was actually um, created. Uh, this particular model dates from around about 90, sorry around about 2020. There are no significant retools that I could find on the website Scalemates, which I use for these uh, use for this information. So we can potentially assume that the actual moulding and the actual well the, the quality of the moulding and certainly the plastic has probably improved is probably around about sort of 50 years old but it still stands the test of time it's actually quite nice so we've got um the uh, airframe section here we've got quite a lot of um rivets on the airframe we've also got this nice sort of sleek sort of almost corrugated section here we've got a door the doorways are quite nicely outlined obviously we've got several windows to put in on this one as well so that's the actual first section here we have the uh, clear window section. So we actually have the front panel, which you seem to have to paint a fair amount of this as well, because you've actually got rivets on here. So you're actually going to paint up quite a lot of this, which is quite interesting. I don't think I've seen that very much before. That's going to be an interesting way to do it. I think you actually get two options on the uh, nose as well. One with a turret and maybe one with just an actual sort of single gun coming out and that would be the, um, the rear one I imagine there as well so yeah we've got the clear section this one deals with the uh, bits and bobs if you like we've got the flaps which are nicely detailed we've got the uh, I think that's going to be the tail there yeah that's the tail and we've got the rear rudders here which are single units you don't have to stick them together and they've got a nice sort of ribbed effect on them We've got two quite large propellers. We've got one, two, three, four crew members that I can see. This one's kind of seated in a squat position. I'm not going to say what he actually looks like doing, but I'm sure he's just a gunner. We have the engines here, which are quite nicely detailed. I do see a bit of excess on this particular one, which is going to need a bit of attention, and that one, and that one as well. So I'm going to have to get a file out for that one, obviously. We've got a couple of machine guns here, which don't look that great. Yeah, so that's all quite nice. We've got the landing gear. These look like exhausts for the um, the engines. And we've got some quite large wheels. There's no tread very obvious on the wheels, but I don't really think you get much tread on aircraft wheels anyway, aircraft tyres. So yeah, that's all present and correct. It all looks quite nice. I mean, like I say, it's a sort of 40 to 50 year old um, moulding as far as I can tell. So don't expect there. Uh, modern quality uh, impressions here moving on to the wings we've got quite a lot of rivets on these particular wings we can see the engine housing here and this is the space for the retractable landing gear and again we've got the upper surfaces of the wings as well it all looks like it's going to go together reasonably easy we can see the, the connecting points here as well they all look quite nice doesn't appear to be any excess on it so I don't have to do any particular reworking on this one so yeah that's all quite nice uh, this particular model I got online uh, I paid $28.95 for it I can't remember I think I got free postage with that as well so it's not exactly what you call a cheap one a cheap kit but it's kind of an interesting aircraft I mean the whole story behind it being part of the uh, Battle of Britain and it coming with the Battle of Britain markings is kind of interesting i suppose and it's kind of something that's probably worthy of a, a little bit more um research i'm not exactly sure which coloring would be my preference but i think it's gonna have to be one with these rather fantastical italian flag markings i think we're probably going to go for that one eventually so yeah that's quite a nice kit this was actually a request by brian from the aforementioned haul kit. Uh, like I said, we're going to be doing another review in a minute for this Hella 6311. Uh, we've also done viewer requests from this haul on our MiG-3 and our Henschel HS-123. We've also done the other Italian medium bomber, the Italiari Spavario. And we've done our rather fant fantastical Arado ARE555. 
So if you're interested in any of those, there's a video you can already up for those. So please do have a look. I uh, hope you enjoyed this little video. Uh, questions and suggestions are always welcome. And requests from my rather extensive um, model stash, which is now taking up half of the study. Uh, it's probably around about 200 kits at the moment, so there's plenty for us to be looking at in the future. So please do stay tuned and please like and subscribe and join me for my novice building ride. I'm actually off for 12 days now. So we're going to do some building. Yeah, we're going to do some building. I think tomorrow we're going to do a Spitfire. And then I think we're going to do some, have a bit of a, a Japanese themed week. We're going to try and build some Japanese fighters and maybe a couple of medium bombers that I've got. Because I kind of find that interesting and I've got a bottle of sake on the way as well. So uh, yeah, cheers. Like and subscribe and I'll be seeing you soon. Ta-da!